class. I am Dr. P. Ganesh Kumar. Today in this class what we are going to discuss is fundamentals of computer networks. So this lecture, this video lecture which is going to give an clear insights about what is an data communication, why we need to go for an computer networks and what are all the fundamental things. For example, the fundamental things, what is an network? What are all the data? What type of data we are going to communicate in this? And what is mean by topology? What are the basic topologies available? How the switchings are happening? And how the internet works? And what is the history of an internet? So this is what we are going to discuss in this video. So for every class, there must be some objective. So here in this uh, video lectures, the main objective is first to understand what is data communication. So what is the need for we are going for in data communication um, and how the devices are able to communicate between one device to another device in different formats. And then we are going to see what is a network and what is the importance of a network, how we can able to evaluate the performance of a network and then various types of network we are going to see. We come across many different types of networks, uh, for example, LAN, MAN, WAN. So how the LAN, MAN, WANs are works, different networks are works, and how we can able to classify this is a LAN network, this is a MAN network, this is a WAN network, how we can able to classify on what criteria we are going to classify, and then about the internet history. What is an internet, how the internet works, and how it has been evolved. So these are all the things we are going to discuss in this uh, uh, lecture. Now let us get into the first topic. So what is data communication? The purpose, if you want to connect the two devices, the main focus and purpose is going to, to share some exchange of information. So if I'm going to connect with my uh, laptop, with my mobile phone. So ultimately I'm going to share some information from the mobile phone to the laptop or the laptop to my mobile phone. So there will be some sharing of information. So here there are two ways you can able to uh, sharing an information. So either it may be uh, from the locally you can able to exchange an information or sharing an information or else sometimes we may be exchanging, we may be sharing an information to very remote locations. So for, for example, some different networks or geographically some different locations, you may be sharing some information. So that is where this data communication, either it may be a local or it may be a remote in nature. And then how it is going to support. So basically we require some telecommunications. This telecommunication, which will start from telephony and telegraph and television. Nowadays, we have an, a different kinds of data networks. It starts from the generations of different generations of telecommunication network. It starts from 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G. Now it has been a 5G is in the picture. So with that 5G, we could able to share a lot of information with a very high speed. So each generation of the networks will have an has its own advantages and upgradation it is happening for every decades and this communications are happening at a different in as well as it is in a very far away distance also so to exchange the data between any two devices it may be any two electronic devices via some form of transmission media so we know that there are two types of basic transmission mediums we generally may use. So that two transmission mediums, everyone will aware that one is a wired transmission medium, another one is a wireless transmission medium. So each uh, medium is having its own characteristics. Its characteristics means it, it will support a different data rate. It may support for a, a distance how much it is going to cover. There are a lot of things it is there in transmission media. This is the basically about uh, data communication. If you want to perform exchange or share information from one device to another device. So what are all the things are required? So as per this, there are five components are required for data communication. 
So what are the five different components? Now let us see. The first component is going to be an ascender. So some sender wants to exchange or some sender wants to share an information. So we require basically a sender. And then we require one receiver because I am going to send some information. Somebody else is going to, some designated uh, receiver is going to receive my information. So now these are of the two components. And the third component is on what medium I am going to transfer the data. On what medium? Whether I am going to use a wired medium or else I am going to use a wireless medium. So what is my transmission medium? And once the transmission medium, if I am going to connect from sender to the receiver, then what I am going to exchange is I am going to share the messages between this sender to the receiver. So message. So totally it is a four components. So here you can see that the four components are a basic components for any data communication. Now let us have it in a procedural way. Who wants to transfer? When he wants to transfer? What medium he wants to transfer? How much time he wants to transfer? All these things many questions will arise. For example, now uh, simultaneously around uh, 1 million people wants to send a message through a single network. So who will give an highest priority? Who is going to transfer data? So these are all the things has to be derived in. We need to separately make a, some protocol. So in that protocol, which is going to define a set of rules and regulations that governs the data communication, that governs the data communication between one sender to the another receiver in the network any two persons wants to communicate it will be an important so this protocol is it has been written a rule one two three four five similarly the rules has been written so whoever wants to exchange the data definitely they have to follow this rules so that set of rules we call it as a protocols so now we understood that there are five components are required one is a sender receiver transmission medium message and protocol these are all the components of data communication once the components has been decided so how the data are going to be represented the data are going to be represented in the different formats it is not only restricted to either only a text or video or audio no now people wants to exchange all kinds of data through the single medium. For example, now I'm using a 4G network. In that 4G network, via the mobile network, mobile data also, I can exchange, I can browse, I can share videos, I can share audio, I can make a video calls, anything I want to do. So it has to, the data has to represent it in different forms. That forms, here I have listed a few forms, text, numbers, images, audio, video, animations, and etc. It is not limited to the six beyond that also. Now, how the communications are going to be happen? How the data are going to flow from one device to the another device? There are some three basic principles we generally we use. That three basic principles are simplex communication, half duplex communication, and full duplex communication. Now let us see what is a simplex communication and how it is happening. What is an half duplex, similarly full duplex. In this diagram you can see that there are two devices wants to communicate. So this mainframe is going to send a data. So the direction of data is from mainframe to only monitor. So this type of communication is called it as a simplex. It means that the direction of data is going to be unidirectional. It is not possible for the bidirectional data communication. So even you can see that our mainframe computer is there, processor is there and then monitor is there. From the processor there is a processing it, finally video signals are sent to your monitor. But nowadays even that too also we have a bidirectional communication with the help of uh, uh, touch screen methods. So conventional monitor I am telling you. So that is a one best example for simplex communication and for an half duplex communication. 
so both the devices both the devices can able to share and data but the only restriction is at a time only one device can able to share it, and the rest of the device has to wait when he gets a turn then the next device will transfer a data the best example practical example is nowadays we can witness that walkie talkie in this walkie talkie the one person only can talk at a time and then the next person will get an extra turn so similarly the data exchange data communication will take place between any two devices that type of communication is called it as a data flow is called it as a half duplex data flow communication and then full duplex communication it is free to move both the directions both the devices any time the devices can able to exchange the data this is what this is what right now we are witnessing in that internet as well as other uh, 4g 3g all the, all the generations of networks which is completely to supporting for a full duplex data flow data communication now let us see the networks what is mean by network to interconnecting one device to the another device so we are going to network the electronic devices the purpose is going to be an exchange of data to sharing an information between one device to the another devices that is call it as a network so interconnection of a set of devices provided that devices should be capable of communication so that is call it as a networks so here the devices what is mean by devices he can tell so i can mention that it starts from host that host may be a may be a desktop computer laptop computer large computers workstations ipads uh, smartphones or ip enabled cctv cameras so whichever the devices is capable of communications that devices can be networked and the networking devices the next set of devices are networking devices for example routers switches modems routers and gateway converters these are all the networking devices also be a part of the devices in a network how we can evaluate the performance and often any one network so there are many criteria there are many parameters you can able to measure the network performance but here we have listed out few important performance criteria the first one is basically a performance how speed it is how how fast the data are going to be transmitted what fast it can able to process it so the basically it is going to be a performance of a network and then how much the networks are going to be reliable and then security so how much security has been provided for a particular network and then how much accurate the data are going to be transmitted for example i am going to transfer 1 mb of data finally if it is going to reach a only a 0.9 mb of data are going to be an accurate the rest of the data are going to be error so it is a 90 percentage of accuracy likewise we can see that accuracy error rate throughput normalized throughput there are so many ways you can able to evaluate the performance of an any network but here we have listed the important basic performance criteria now let us see what is a topology now we know that there are some devices if the device is capable of communication and can be interconnected and sharing an information it is going to be a network so what are all the ways i can able to connect one device to the another device the way in which the devices are going to be physically interconnected that is we call it as a topology so there are some basic topologies also there now we can see that there are two types of connections one is a point to point connections point to point connection only two devices that two devices are going to be interlinked to get a single link single transmission media it can both the devices if it is going to be a full duplex it can bidirectionally exchange the data and the next one is a multi point there will be some main frame with a high capacity links are going to be there multiple devices can able to share the same link or same medium 
it can able to exchange the data. Now we can see some of the topologies, basic topology. The first one is a completely interconnected topology. That topology name it as a mesh topology. For example, we have considered here the cases, the five devices we have considered for our cases. Now we can consider that A, B, C, D, E. So now A will be connected to all other devices in that particular topology. A is directly linked to connected to B, similarly C, D and E. The same way other nodes also will be connected like this. So here if you look at it, total number of systems are going to be n is equal to 5. So the total number of links are going to be 10. What is the major drawback here is when the size of the network is size of the topology is going to be less it is a highly efficient when the number of devices is going to increase then the number of links are going to be exponentially increased that can be calculated with the help of formula n into n minus 1 by 2 that is going to be a number of links in the mesh topology so here whatever the topology here going to we are going to list it out here the mass topology, star topology, bus and brain topology. Each topology has its own advantages and disadvantages that we have seen in some other lectures in detail. Next is a star topology. So in this star topology, there will be a centralized, there will be a central hub switch kind of devices, networking devices are going to be there all other host or devices are going to connect to that central device the central device may consist of a multiple ports even you can witness uh, many uh, shops or uh, industries uh, small industries and institutions and the laboratories you can see that there will be a common hubs or switches are going to be there all the devices are connected to that particular hub or switch <coughs> so that it can form a network but here one big disadvantage is the single point of failure if the hub is failure the entire network will get affected but other one that another one point of view you can see that simply you can plug and play with your devices and any one device is in offline it won't affect the other communications in the network these are all the advantages also next is the best topology it is a very uh, very old topology there will be a common uh, a medium is going to be there so everywhere it is going to tap and they can connect to multiple devices all the devices is going to use the same transmission medium so uh, it is a very simple in structure but the number of collision domains are going to be very high when the number of system increases at the same time each device is generating a huge amount of data then the collision is going to be very high. This is also advisable for very limited, less number of devices in a single topology. Next is the ring topology, which is going to have a ring uh, transmission media. That transmission media may be a twisted pair cable, fiber optic cable, or any type of transmission medium. So through jack, through that uh, uh, networking jack, you can able to connect your devices to your topologies into that network so here one more uh, advantage is that the devices uh, bi-directional data flow between one device to the another devices here also any one devices will leave that network it won't affect the other network data communication next we can see that the types of networks there are different types of networks so earlier we can we we discussed about the topology, the way in which the devices are physically which is going to be interconnected. Next is we are going to uh, we are going to extend our network based on the geographical coverage and what is the size and what is the ownership capability. So based on that we are going to classify the networks into three major categories. That three major categories are local area network, LAN, metropolitan area network, MAN and wide area network. It is uh, something we call it as an uh, internet. First, let us see the local area network. This LAN network is a privately owned. Normally, this will be 
uh, this network is going to connect some host in a single office or it may be a single building or it may be a some small scale industries or some campus for example any one small institution is there that institution may have a 500 uh, computers so uh, that can be created as a separate lan network so this also depending on the need so either that need may varies from two computers to it can start from the two computers to even for a uh, one company it can able to cover even a 500 600 or 1k number of devices can able to connect it at the same time this network can able to support for any type of data communication both in uh, entertainment kind of uh, audio video uh, devices also so how these devices are going to be identified in the network if it is going to be a two devices there won't be any problem if it is going to be a 500 or 1k devices then it requires an identifier say for example in in colleges then the students are going to be identified with the roll number if the same students will be identified with the university registration number in university whenever the students uh, rise up any queries or rise up any 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 concern so immediately if it is going to be a college he will mention the roll number if it is going to be a, a university related matters it is going to, he is going to refer a university register number so with that it can able to identify identify either the university or institution can able to identify the student the same way in network also it has an identifier so this identifier what is the qualities of an identifier identifier should have an unique unique format as well as it should not be duplicated because the same roll number is given to multiple students then there will be a confusion will happen the same way one host must have an, a unique identifier it should not be duplicated to any other devices so whenever the devices in the lan network wants to share an information wants to send an information to some other devices then it has to use for the source host number as well as the destination host number as if how we are going to send an email so there will be a two email id whom uh, this email is whom uh, who is going to receive at the same time at the receiver has to identify that who has sent this message so the from email id is going to be there some what is and subject is also going to be there. the same way there is some format is there for a lan network and then this is a, a small glimpse of uh, a lan network first one the past we can see that as if we can use a bus topology the single transmission media there are eight hosts are going to be connected the same thing which has been connected to the switch so easily you can able to configure or something as well as it has its own advantages you can easily extend your network without any extra efforts or something land with a switch and next is a wide area network now let us compare with the lan network to understood the wan network in clearly so lan is and we understood that it is an limited in size so which is a which is going to be a limited in geographical area whereas a wan is a wider geographical area it starts from the a city and then state or province country or even it is going to cover the entire, entire world that is what we call it as a uh, worldwide internet so lan is going to interconnect the host which is going to interconnect the host this is an a uh, very important differentiation whereas the wan is going to interconnect the the connecting devices such as the networking devices such as the switches routers modems routers there are some networking devices the wan will be identified with that number of nodes or hosts are going to be and the networking devices whereas in lan the nodes are going to be an host lan is normally normally it is a privately owned by the organization by the office or by the institution something like that 
whereas van is run by an communication companies or leased by an organization or it may be run by an any government organizations this is an a uh, point to point network in terms of van uh, one network to the another network and the next one is in a switched van network so here there will be in a four switches are there so each switch is connected to an or it may be a four nodes or four routers are going to be there that router is going to connect it to multiple networks now we can see that two lans and one van how to make a uh, network so this is an west coast office next we have an east coast office so each one is a separate lan network switched lan network now the west coast office switch is going to connected with router r1 similarly east coast office switch is connected to router r2 now these are these routers are going to connected via the point to point van network next is a heterogeneous in practical we can't expect that all the lands only is going to be connected for example i i am in a home i want to connect to an internet that is different some lands may be a different some some mans may be a different so how we can able to connect here you can see that there is one resident the his this fellow is going to want to connect it another one lan network switched lan network is there that lan network also want to connect to an van network another one lan and then now it is a switched van network is there so where there is a four switches with the one van network now the resident will be connected via the modem he will be connecting to an point to point modem with a point to point van he will be connected to an van similarly the lan is also will be connected via the routers this is how the heterogeneous networks are created so nowadays our networks are completely it is a mixed up of things we cannot expect that a uh, single type of network next we have said that switched network switched uh, wan network so what is mean by switching so now internet small i is a switched network it is called it as a switched network so what is the purpose of the switches switch is going to connect at least two links together so each link may be connected to at least one lan network so switch needs to forward the data from one network to the another network now we are talking about in terms of wan network concepts so switch responsibility is to forward the data whichever it comes from its connected lan network that data will be forwarded from this network to for example one x network to another one switch which is connected to y network it is going to forward it so now how the switchings are going to happen what are the different types of switches or switching sir switched networks are available there are three types of switched networks are available the one is an circuit switched network second one is message switched network third one is packet switched network now you can understood that <coughs> by giving an example you can easily understood what will comes under a circuit switched network what will comes under a message switched network what will comes under a packet switched network of course everyone will and everyone will very clear that the packet switched network what we are right now we are using in the internet but the circuit switched network is you might have remember that in 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 one decades or two decades before you could you could have witnessed that there are some landline psd and phones are available so that is the best example for circuit switched network next is a message switch network it is an absolute now it is not available actually it is the best example is telegram so our indian government also around 2 uh, years or 3 years back they have uh, completely removed the uh, message switch based telegram from the uh, usage from the people that is an best example now uh, so we need not to discuss in detail about the message switch networks now we can discuss about the circuit switch network and packet switch network in packet switched network there are two types is there one is a datagram approach another one is a virtual circuit approach 
the main difference between a datagram and virtual circuit approach is the datagram approach means if one node wants to send 100 packets 100 packets each packet will follow different different paths whereas in virtual circuit type method all the 100 packets will follow first it will identify the shortest path and all the 100 packets will move in the same path that is a basic uh, difference now you can remember that the best example for a circuit switching is telephone so how we are making a telephone so if you call to someone else the connection will be established first initially there will be a uh, uh, call setup delay it means you, it will be ringing time something is there there may be a 20 seconds or 30 seconds there will be a standard is there. based on that standard they will be fixing the networks till the time that is a call setup delay and then once the connection has been established from the source and the destination and then the dedicated path will be established and then path is established for an entire conversation unless until they will cut their uh, connection till the time the continuously will be there it means that there is a fixed bandwidth is available as well as constant bitrate can be achieved and once the connection setup has been over we need not to have any other overhead bits after the connection setup this is what circuit switching whereas in packet switching method there is no dedicated path is there so every packet will tries to reach their destination by using a different different paths so route will be established based on either it may be a datagram approach or virtual circuit method it will be passing it the packet transmission delay will be experienced by each and every packet so overload increases the packet delays and overhead will be there for each and every packet some packet may reach one second some packet may reach 0.5 milliseconds likewise it will vary from one packet to another packet so bandwidth is going to be a dynamic bandwidth variable data rate can be achieved by using a packet switching mechanism now we can see that circuit switch method there will be one switch four connections are there that connections are going to be a low capacity links similarly and the side now this switch to this switch that red line indicates that high capacity lines whereas the black lines connections are indicating the low capacity line because one switch may handle multiple calls so it must have a switch to switch connection should have a high capacity line this is one example for circuit switched network Next we can see the packet switching network. So the four devices which is having connected to one router via the network. Where each node will generate a multiple packets. All the packets are coming into a router. Where the router is going to have some buffer. Where the packets are going to be in the queue. Similarly other router. Router to router connections are going to be a high capacity line. But the basic principles are going to be same, only some technical differences. Now we can see that what is internet? There are two uh, things we need to understand. The one is an small i. In internet spelling, if I mention a small i, it means that two or more networks that can communicate with each other. It is something like an internet kind of things. Whereas if we mention a capital I in that internet spelling, it is composed of a millions of interconnected networks that is going to be a WAN network. Now we can see that how the internet structures are going to be. There is a backbones are going to be there. There is a backbones. For example, now I am explaining with this uh, uh, province. In this province, we may be having a there are many data service, internet service providers are available. We call it as ISP, internet service providers. Here we may be providing, they may be providing a geo, they may be providing one ISP, internet service provider. Similarly, Atrum, similarly, government owned BSNL and another one player is Vodafone, likewise. So these are all the backbones. From the backbones, backbones are peer level connectors 
provider network next is on provider network from the provider network the customer networks are going to be there all the customers are linked to customer network provider network internet service provider to connect to the backbones in this backbone one backbone is connected to another backbones so now the pairing points so provider network to the provider network there will be a pairing points at the same time the backbones which will have an their pairing connections so this is how the internet structure is going to be there so the customer can connect through the customer network to the provider network and then it will be connected to your backbones now we can see an internet history how the internet has been evolved in 1960 initially the telegraph and telephone networks was there but there is that time there is a demand is for only constant rate of communication and that too once the connection has been established all this communication which will be happen in an encoded message or it may be a voice message in 1970s late 1970s the computer networks slowly evolved where they need to the demand has been raised to some bursty data traffic they want to have a variable rates of data rate at different times for easy to understand in a in 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 a main metropolitan cities or any other cities if you go there on a peak time there will be a huge traffic will be there on off peak time the traffics are going to be very less the same way the variable rates at different times so we require an packet switched network so in 1972 bob and uh, they have they are in the part of arpanet advanced research project agency network this is one project so they will be operating in a different location geographically different location but they want to connect and they want to share some exchange some information that is the time their demand has been increased to link to dissimilar network networks they want to connect a dissimilar networks so once they connected there are some many other problems also raised that problems are the diverse packet size each network each will follow a different protocol that protocol will generate a different packet format so the packet size also it is differing and also the way in which it is an interface to the network that is also it is very somebody may be using a rs232 somebody may be using a rs432 uh, 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 somebody may be using a i to the fourth the blight and different interfaces people start using it and the diverse transmission rates also it is required in that time only they need to develop some solution that solutions are called as a gateways that gateways or the protocol converters which is going to convert from one form into another form that that structure may be either it may be a software formed or or else it may be in the hardware format this is how the internet has been evolved i hope in this class you might have understood that what is a data communication and what are all the components are required for data communication for exchanging one device to the another devices and what is network and what are all the different types of networks and what is mean by topology and what are all the basic topologies and advantages and disadvantages and how the network performance can be evaluated and then we have discussed about the switching what are all the switchings they are going to do now they are using it past and present and then how what is an internet and how the internet has been evolved and currently where we are and what is the structure of an internet i hope you you understood all these concepts if you have any queries you please put it in the Uh, comment box i'm ready to respond to your questions thanks for listening my class thank you once again